Before we discuss why castles aren't built anymore, we need to talk about why castles came to be. Because first there were no castles, then there were castles, then there weren't any more castles. Our story first begins with the Carolingian Empire, which was a massive Frankish empire ruled by the Carolingian dynasty from 751 to 888, and was made up of loosely unified princes, lords, and vassals. The empire was plagued with decades of constant pillaging and attacks from Moors in the south and Vikings in the north. The empire barely held unity until 888 when Emperor Charles the Fat was overthrown by his nephew, Arnulf of Carinthia, who was illegitimate to the Carolingian dynasty. Hence, the empire ended. From here, the empire was divided up among Arnulf's allies, which made the empire vastly disoriented. This segmentation of the empire put many lords and vassals on the defensive of their own territory, as these new and stated kings didn't really care about the fortune of their subjects, and besides, they were too busy dealing with their new neighboring countries. The idea was that if you wanted to maintain your chunk of land, no one was going to defend it for you but yourself. Whether the threat be from pillaging moors, vikings, and even neighboring lords, you had to do it yourself. What better way to defend your precious land than erect a 30-foot high, 20-foot thick curtain wall around it and place your family and nobility in the safest place, inside a fortified stone castle. Bonus points for building on a hill or using a moat. This was the age of castles, and they started popping up all over Europe, lasting from the late 9th century up to the late 15th century. Okay, so why aren't there castles being built anymore? Well, are you asking why castles aren't being used as a military defense, or why people aren't actually building their own castles? Um... Both. The military strategy of building castles all changed in 1494 when the Italian War started. Basically, Charles VIII of France was like, hmm, let's invade Italy, which he did with very little resistance and took over the Kingdom of Naples. With him, he brought soldiers, horses, and a siege train of artillery. Now this 30-foot high curtain wall and stone fortress go from an impregnable barrier to a bullseye and are gladly shot to gravel by French artillerists. The Italian Wars finally ended in 1559 and with it went the utility of castle defenses. By the early 1600s, military defenses became more stylized to defend against artillery, and looked similar to the iconic star fort seen in the 18th century during the American Revolution. In these new designs, towering castles were lowered to avoid artillery shelling. The curtain walls were lowered and made into sloped earthenworks called ramparts. The walls met at 45 degree angles to deflect artillery fire and allow the defenders to provide crossfire against attackers. As opposed to castles, star forts took less time to build and had a lower center of gravity. The earthenworks absorbed the shock of artillery shells as opposed to shattering like the stone walls did. Castles being obsolete and difficult to maintain were torn down to reuse their stone materials or were outright abandoned. In the 18th and 19th centuries, wealthy aristocrats purchased castles that were in good condition and rebuilt them as mansions, hotels, or museums, such as Windsor Castle and Thornberry Castle. But why aren't people building castles in your neighborhood right now? Well, it comes down to three reasons. Castles are terribly expensive, have little to no climate control, and are difficult to modify. Firstly, the stone has to be mined from a quarry, unlike lumber that's easily purchased at your local hardware store. That quarry fee alone is going to make you reconsider building a castle. Secondly, stone is a terrible incubator. In the winter, it's freezing, and in the summer, it's blazing hot. So temperature control is out the window. Lastly, castles are difficult to modify especially for accommodating plumbing, heating, and electricity. Oh, you want to extend your kitchen an extra 10 feet? Eh, no problem. We'll knock through this plaster and wood within a couple of days and have the kitchen built next month. Okay, let me get this straight. You thought you'd like a 12th century Gothic-style castle with 9-inch thick walls, but you found out you don't like it, and now you want an open floor plan that connects your kitchen to your dining room. Okay, well, I'll need four stone masons, a gothic influence architect, a civil engineer, and a jackhammer. Oh, and it'll cost far more than a regular house. So, unless you're a millionaire many times over, a castle just isn't practical. Unless that is you're trying to defend your family from a horde of vikings.